The great thing about additive blending is that as long as you can make sure that all of the relevant meshes have all of their pixels visibly rendering on screen, then it doesn't actually matter in what order the meshes render. The problem lies in that all of these meshes are render writing to the depth buffer, which means that not all of the pixels do show up. Fortunately, there is a way to stop that from happening, and that is via using the code ZWRITEOFF. You can read about that and some of the other things we're talking about here on the page, Shader Lab page called Culling and Depth Testing. So here's ZWrite on and off. You can read about that there. Um, the ZWrite command has only two options, on and off. And this is you're writing to the depth buffer or you are not. On is the default. So although the other shaders in this tutorial have written to the depth buffer, I never used ZWrite on, and I don't plan on it, unless perhaps it's a case where I'm using ZWrite off in the category block and need to overwrite that in a subshader or pass. So let's add ZWrite off to the shader and see what happens. I'm going to open up a new scene to show that. So it appears that we're good. We are having all of our meshes visible. We have a blend between these two and a blend between that result and the one in the front. And they are all closer than the background. So we start off with black, and so we see black blended in. If we, and if we were to get rid of that black background, then you'd see them all blending together, but with gray. Looks are deceiving here, however. It's not purely a matter of the meshes being closer to the camera than the black plane. It's also about the rendering order now that we've introduced ZWrite Off into the shader. In actuality, ZWrite Off by itself is not usually enough to get proper semi-transparent results. And here's another scene that illustrates this. So in this case, we have still three meshes in the scene. One of them is now intersecting the plane. We have another one in the middle which disappears when we rotate the camera. And then there's the one in the front, which is behaving uh, as we're used to. So by default, the first mesh that gets rendered in your scene, as long as it fully fits into the camera's frustum, will have all of its pixels rendered. Then we keep rendering all of the meshes in the scene until we're out of meshes, and each mesh's pixels will be rendered based on depth testing. However, because these meshes are not writing to the Z buffer, if the black plane was sent to the GPU after the vertex color meshes, then the plane would overwrite the pixels of the vertex color meshes as it does it, it's treating these meshes as if they were the very background of the camera. There's this is being this is like the first mesh in the scene without having um, any other meshes already being there. Um, so despite the fact that this mesh is being rendered. It is overwritten by the black plane because whatever the very end of the depth buffer is, the very farthest away value is, we're not changing that by putting this mesh on screen. So it blends with gray, it then gets overwritten. Now we have the values of the black plane in the depth buffer and then these two meshes perform the Z testing based on these pixels. They don't have to worry about the pixels of this mesh anymore because they're completely overwritten in both RGBA and uh, depth values by the plane. So in the case of this mesh, we don't see the entire thing because part of it is behind the plane. So we know that it is actually doing Z, t Z testing, and we also know that it's being rendered after the plane. It's being sent to the GPU after the plane, because otherwise we would not see it.